I should make you wait for the unboxing, but I'm going to give you a sneak peek at the TickWatch Pro because I want to tell you where you can get this. In the show notes, you'll find a link to Amazon because from now until August the 15th, you're going to be able to get it from Amazon if you're an Amazon Prime member. If you're not, well, from August 15th to September 30th, you'll be able to get it exclusively from Amazon as well. That's right. And the buying link is down below. After September 30th, hey, could be anywhere. So again, check the buying links under this video and we'll have the best deals for you we can find. Click over there and pick it up. Helps us out, helps you out, and gets you an incredible watch. Are you ready? Here is the Tick Watch Pro. Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel dedicated to smartwatches and we're available on the web at smartwatchticks.com. And today, today is an auspicious day, everybody. I usually say it's an exciting day when we have an unboxing, but today is actually auspicious because we're taking a look at the brand new TickWatch Pro. That's right, this is the upgrade to the whole TickWatch, TickWatch 2, TickWatch E, TickWatch S, all of that is now the TickWatch Pro, and it's in this box. First time we're going to take a look at it. Let's get in here and open it up. Oh, carefully. There we go. As we rip into it, I want you to take a notice at what all it says it's got. Now, we'll be repeating this over and over again, I'm sure, but it runs with the Wear OS. That's... Um, Android Wear by Google. It's got five-day battery life with layered display. That's something new. That is audacious. We'll get to that in a minute, too. Google Play, a uh, pay, sorry, with NFC. So you can actually use this watch. This is one of the first we've seen, really, with NFC, especially in the USA, uh, where you can actually use, uh, use it for payments at McDonald's and Starbucks, I think, and other places, too. Premium materials, it's got GPS built into it, music streaming, full waterproof IP68 and dust resistant, has its heart rate sensor and step tracking for your uh, fitness work, and a thousand plus watch faces, all with Google Play, available through download. Google Assistant's built in as well. So, let's get into the box. Mmm... Now, why did I say these guys are audacious? Well, because they're doing something new with their screen technology that's extremely bold and daring. You're going to see that as we unveil two screens. Not one, but two. One in front and one behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see this in action. I've heard about it, and I've wanted to test it out. And of course show it off to everybody wow there it is there it is this is a nice box a nice presentation overall it's coming on a little card where we have to take the strap off oh a nice wow it feels really high quality leather leather band here oh look at that it's like leather on the outside but something different on the underneath side that's new whoa we're getting a lot of new technology Silver clasp. Yeah, look at that. Leather on this side and something that's going to be sweat resistant on the other side. We've got a little cover in the back to protect everything. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is something. Look at that. There's our heart rate sensor area. There's the charger. Two buttons on this side. We've got a bit of a cover here as well. Wow. Oh, <laughs> this is, this is <clears throat> awe-inspiring. You know, I'm doing this because I've noticed a lot of you are outside the U.S. in countries where English is a second language and you have fun playing with uh, learning English <laughs> from some of our reviews. So I'll throw in some A words for you. We've got audacious, auspicious, and definitely awe-inspiring. When you hear me go, ah. Oh, that's awe, folks. That's awe. Look at this. And it's removable bands. Easily removable. Just pop them out. Can swap them out. That's the watch. We will be back to you. Here's the box. Inside the box we have... 
Wow, an entire book? That's the quick guide? I'd hate to see the reference guide. <laughs> okay, oh my goodness. Lolly, okay, we're gonna page through it. That's what makes these reviews long, folks. If you just want to see it in action, skip ahead. I don't know what point, but uh, you know, you'll know you find where we turn it on. But I'm going to enjoy the juice out of this moment. And speaking of, there's my little juice bag, silica gel to keep it all dry. Here are the um, charging things. Okay, it looks like it's a charging dock. Yeah, with a USB connector. All solid, all one unit. Yeah, let's try this out. Looks like it lines up right between... Oh, whoa! It just snapped in place. Wow, okay. It's on there and it's solid. This is not going anywhere. Good. Wow. Good. Swift. Solid design. Okay, that's the charger. And I think that's it because this doesn't come out. We just have those different compartments. So we're down to the manual before we can dig into this. Now, I do this all the time, for those of you who are familiar with the uh, channel, because nobody else does. And a lot of times, most of the time, these are not in PDAs or available for downloading on the Internet. So we're going to take a moment and just page through this. And that way, if you want to freeze frame it, you can. And you can um, read it at your leisure. There's no way I'll cover everything this thing can do and lots of it, like setting it up and getting it started and troubleshooting. You're going to be probably coming back to, to check that out. Now, there's a QR code. This is what you scan to download the uh, related app that you're going to be using for tethering this. Okay, and there's more system information. Wow, pages of safety precautions. Now we get in, you notice a difference kind of uh, as you get into these higher end, more sophisticated watches, you have a lot of legal information, safety precautions and licenses and, and, and lots of that. As those first few pages are the functional stuff and this is the stuff that the lawyers want you to be exposed to. So we've gone through that and then there's warranty and compliance and we're not going to take too long to go through these there you go and then we get into another language eventually as the book is filled with a variety of different languages covering everything in the tick watch pro all right that is the unboxing next is to charge this up learn a little bit about it and turn it on for you but before i do that just so you know what we've got this is a TickWatch Pro. These are the key features. It has essential mode and smart mode, which is that power switching that will let you go back and forth between two different screens that use two different levels of power that gives you different battery life. It's got premium build quality, like we mentioned, NFC payments, full IP68 waterproof, so you can swim with it. Well, it's not recommended to swim with it, but you can put it underwater. Um, it's got this layered display technology, and as we talk about that, you'll see that it's a little bit tricky. We have to learn how to switch between what they call essential and smart mode that takes you in and out of basically like a digital watch mode into a full-on uh, smartwatch. The specifications as presented to us so far from the company are listed here. We have Bluetooth in it. We've got a little bit of memory, uh, 512 megabytes of RAM, four gigabytes of uh, total storage. And then the essential mode and smart mode battery life expectancy for the watch. And what's really cool is you can have it on your arm, glance at it, see the time always on in the long essential mode uh, capability and just switch it to smart mode when you want to use it as a smartwatch. All right, let's go. Let's really look at this thing. Okay, as soon as I put the watch in the charger and started it charging, it turned on and booted up, asked me what language I want. I selected English and it took me to this page. That's when I figured, you know, I want you guys to see what happens when you first turn your watch on. Uh, it goes into here and it's something that you can scroll and read. And it talks about how they're going to be working with uh, your data. 
And with all the new laws and rules that are coming into place on a global scale, everybody is concerned about privacy and security. And so this gives you guidelines for the tick watch that you are about to go into once you've bought it. Then you could go in and look at any of these things in more detail, and I presume those are also on the web or accessible from the watch after we get past this page. You say, I've read it, and you move on. Then, on your phone, you can download and open the Wear OS by Google, which is the uh, app that you need in order to talk to any watches that use um, the Android Wear operating system. Okay, and some help that you can go into in case you need help getting started. I know a lot of you are new to smartwatches and working with a Wear watch is a little bit tricky because you actually have to do it in combination with your phone. Okay, and there's where you can get more help. All right, let's take it on to the next step in the Wear OS. I put in the name of this particular watch, the Tick Watch Pro, and that's the number that identifies this one. And we get to here. By putting Wear OS in the Google Play Store, you get here, you install it, and you open it. Once you've opened it, you see I've connected to a different Tick Watch, my old Tick Watch E, so I'm going to have to tap and add a new watch. Notice that you can have multiple watches on here if you want. And there it is, Tick Watch Pro. That's the number it looked for. Connecting to the Tick Watch Pro. There's the uh, pass key number that it wants to pair. I say OK, and it's connected. Simple as that, all right? Wear OS on your phone, your Tick Watch Pro. Put them together, make sure Bluetooth is on, and you get connected. Now, we can continue to set up on the phone because the watch will get all of its information from what we put into the app through the phone. Okay, good, you're with me. Okay, first ask me if I wanna copy over my account information, which I did, and after it completed that, it took me to this screen where it says to stay connected to Wi-Fi. It can program the watch to connect into your Wi-Fi network through the Wear OS by Google Cloud Sync. So we'll connect on that. You can send messages from your watch by syncing your contacts if you want to. I'm gonna skip that one for now. You can check your calendar to see if there's any events. This is your Google Calendar now that you can check on your watch. Most of the Android watches we use don't access the Google Calendar. As you know, they have their own little calendar that's not very useful. So that's a nice feature that Wear OS can, uh, can do for you if you allow that access. And you can get your notifications at a glance, keep your phone in your pocket and display your notifications here, which we're gonna allow that. Then we have to select Wear OS by Google right here. It's gonna um, inform you about all of this information as they always do, standard Android stuff. We say OK. Then you can get your location information. Now, your watch uses a GPS inside of it uh, if it's available. Otherwise, it can pull it from your phone. So we go through Next. And we're all set. Touch Done on your phone. And Tick Watch Pro is now fully connected. And we have our first watch face. And then you got this section here where you hit more and you got all these killer watch faces that you can bring in. Oh, it's giving me notices to authorize the use of all of this stuff. Data request settings. You are seeking your consent. Okay. Oh, we're going to turn on steps for step count, heart rate, location information. Wow, motion store, calendar, yep, step sharing, okay. Well, they're very careful about privacy. Make sure you are giving what you want to give. There's the privacy policy loading again, I guess. 
And we're back. There, it, it took that watch face that we s sent over. And notice, I don't know if you can see it, there's the, the subtle watch that came in. It switched the different screens. Allow companion access this device's location. Sure. Okay. Swipe up to get started, it says. A tutorial. Your notifications will appear here. This is a sample notification. Tap to get more details. And then that tells you about the more details. Look at that, guiding you through. Swipe right to exit. Press the power button to go back to the watch face. Press the button to see the apps. And here's all of the different apps that are installed on the watch. Uh, you're getting a guided tour already, which we hadn't even planned yet. Like I said, I just plugged it into the charger. Just uh, uh, to more apps, uh, to the top, press and hold. Okay, to, oh, to move an app to the top. Yeah, if there's something specific you want, like a stopwatch, you press and hold it, and that'll move it back up to the top. Plus, if it works like the other one, uh, the other tick watch did, every time you use an app, it puts it up in the top three. So it's, if it's a common one, it's always going to be uh, near the top. Press that, should take us back to the watch face. Press and hold the watch face will allow us to make modifications. You saw that one was green, let's go with purple, and it can change that. All sorts of good stuff. But back to the app again real quick. There's all these different watch faces and more. This is the ones that they're giving you just to play with. Here's one that says weather. We tapped on that, and there, it's got the temperature here because it's picking that up automatically. And it went back quickly to the soft display. Now this is like a regular digital watch. You see that? I have to get it in the reflected light. Boom, and there, because I twisted the arm, it put that away and it switched back. And now it's switched back to this one again. That's the cool feature about this new screen. All right, now I'm gonna charge it up the rest of the way and we'll run through everything. Okay, I'm going to mention at this point that we cover a lot of stuff in detail here, and some of it's rather long, as you can tell by this review. And in the future, I'm going to start restricting this uh, detailed, in-depth stuff to subscribers only. So if you're really into smartwatches, more than just an overview and an unboxing like you just saw, this type of uh, material you're about to see is going to be available to subscribers only. So take a moment and hit that subscribe button. You can do it while the video is playing, and uh, you'll be able to get information on links to this more in-depth uh, review process that we cover all of the different apps and everything. Otherwise, if you're not into it, that's cool. Uh, you'll just get uh, updates on new watches as we unbox them. All right, with that said, let's move on. As you can see, I've been playing with you here, showing you with a simulated sun what this watch looks like outdoors as it goes back and forth between the two different types of screens. This is like a regular uh, digital watch from the past. You got date and time and step count on it, right? And I happen to have the watch face that matches that's the full color one that lights up on the other screen. So the two combined together give you this really nice back and forth thing. You're not restricted to this screen, of course. You can slide and go to a variety of different other screens. Um, these different watch faces are stock ones and you can add additional ones as we saw briefly from the associated app. Don't know if you guys realize this, but there's a cool one called Watchmaker. It's actually an app. When you get Watchmaker, you can download hundreds, if not thousands of watch faces, and you can even design your own using a little uh, workshop that we've got here at Smartwatch Ticks. You're looking at a watch face right now that's from Watchmaker. When you press and hold, you can get into a subset where you see all kinds of other watch faces all of these have been downloaded directly into the TickWatch Pro. And once you have them on the screen, you can use them as a regular watch face or slide out of it and get back into your standard watch faces. Another way to access some more watch faces is scrolling all the way to the very end. You get a plus sign when you tap on here and you're connected to the internet and everything, you get the list of the watch faces you saw from the app. Yep, you can install them directly from the watch, 
or after you get down to the end of them, you can access more watch faces. I mean, there's tons of them. Here's Watchmaker, yeah. Or you get in here to get more, go straight to the Google Play Store. Now, this is the Google Play Store as implemented on the watch, specifically for watch faces. And look, you've got Facer and Watchmaker, and you've got groups and collections, and you've got individual watch faces, more than you could ever hope for. All right here, directly from that plus sign. So you're pretty much unlimited in what you can do. Let's do the Google Fit Digital, because this actually ties in with the Google Fit app which is on the watch which you can assign through your google account that you can then track on multiple devices it always goes back to that same uh, digital looking time display though the layout of the watch here we go you can't do anything from here uh, the the black and white one but once you uh bring it into the color one which you can do in a variety of right ways i have mine set up that i can twist it to see it or I can touch it to see it, or I can press the button to see it. All of those are options, and you can turn them all on or off, as you'll see. So I'm going to touch it. I'm going to swipe. This is an easy way to navigate and find out your power level, your date. You can go into a mode here that's Do Not Disturb, so you won't get notifications and things. If you're going to go into a meeting, you can go into that mode. Uh, you can come out of it. You can go into airplane mode, shut off all of your radios. You can silence it if you want to or leave the volume up. You get into settings. This is the one where when you go in here, you go into this mode and to turn the screen back on, you have to press the power button. Now it's locked. You see, I can't activate it out of being a digital watch unless I press the button. Once I do, I'm back in again. Really, really handy, folks. Really handy. If you're not going to use your watch for a while and you've got it set for all of this twist and shout kind of stuff, just go there. Go up and tap here, and you're done. You're in this secure mode, in a sense, where it's just a digital watch. There's another way of getting in here that's really elaborate that takes you into a deeper, deeper sleep. And when you come out of it, it has to reboot the watch and takes a minute or so to come back again. Just, you know, shut down and restart it again. But it's in a really deep sleep mode. So if you're almost out of power, but you want to keep everything alive, you can go into that mode. But this one, all you did was, well, what you saw. And you just press the power button once and we're back again. So that's what you get when you swipe down. When you swipe up, you get, okay, I got an email here. This is my notifications. I reply to something I sent to somebody there. It popped out, so I can tap here, swipe up, come back again. Okay, he's replying to something for another watch that we're trying to get in for a review. And you've got multiple copies of all of your notifications that you can read. That was email, but I can get all sorts of other things on there as well. If I swipe to the left, I go into different watch faces. And if I swipe to the right, I go into different watch faces this way. And there I'm back to my stock one that looks just like the black and white one. Dot, 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 dot. We've covered all those directions. If you press and hold on the lit screen, if the watch face has options, you can change them. There's blue. Press and hold. There's orange. You have those choices. But that depends on the watch face itself that's loaded and whether it has capabilities to, to change things. That is everything here. Then we get to our buttons. We have a bottom button and a top. This is our basic power. It'll return us back to our watch face or it will activate the watch when it's in that sleep mode. And the bottom button is programmable. It means you can set it to do any particular app you want. Now, one that I like and I use a lot and I want to have instantly available without hunting for it is a flashlight. You'll see some of these, but if I press once, light it up, press a second time, boom, it's bright man this is so bright you can hardly i mean look how it's making the camera just it's a really bright light and on my arm just by tapping twice on that button i've got a great 
night vision flashlight, I touch it and it turns it off, but it keeps it active so that later, if I want it again, I just touch it to turn it on. If I'm done with all of that, I just simply touch the top button, bring me back to time, it'll turn itself off in a few moments and we're back into watch mode. You can program that for anything you want. It comes stock programmed for the fitness uh, app, so you can go on runs or cycling or whatever. But again, you'll be able to program it. Okay, when we have, that's the buttons, this is on and off. Oh, if you press and hold the bottom button, you have the option of um, going into this essential mode. This is what I was talking about, which will really put it in a deep sleep. So you just have that one uh, screen on, this one right here. But coming out of it requires you to reboot it completely. Okay, we're on. I'm, oh, we're still there. Okay. Uh, the options are to restart or power off. So this is how you completely shut down your TicWatch Pro. If you've wondered how to do that, press and hold, for, press it once to get it lit up, and press it again and hold it, and then you can go in there. And if you don't want any of that stuff, just slide out of it. Okay, press and hold the top button, and we are on Google Voice, where you can talk, and whatever you're saying is going to be um, captured by your basic OK and command word Google. And uh, it's the Google Assistant. It's the full-on Google Assistant working here. And you can use it to you know, do translations or find out what time it is in a particular location or just about anything you want that Google Assistant can do. And look at this. It's even keeping up with me, too. And it hasn't cut me off. There it did. <laughs> I bet you can search the web for me. Um, really handy. That's what you get when you press the top button for a long uh, press and hold. Got that one, press, 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 and press and hold. We've got this one, press, press, press. Okay, gets us into here, which we're going to go into. And press and hold gets us into our Google Assistant thing here. And press to get out of it. Ah, let's take a breath and then let's start. Start? What do you mean start? <laughs> we're how many minutes into this thing and you're just now starting? Yeah, welcome to my channel, everybody. Okay, by start I mean press once and we come into the app drawer or swivel in this case. Your first three things that you're going to see here are the most recently used ones. And I just brought them in alphabetically to show you um, what the, the top ones are. Now, what you're about to see is a mix of stock apps that came with this and um, some of my own um, stuff that I've added that are where capable apps. Alarm, agenda, settings, all that stuff. Again, those are, are, are the top three will show up there. So I'm going to begin right here where the whole thing starts. And it starts actually with this thing called stopwatch. When you get in here, you can begin a stopwatch. And look at this. Isn't this fun? Yeah, this is going to be a long review because where else are you going to find this like really in depth? And you can skip through it. Hey, you know, you can go and put it in 1.5x or even 2x and then it'll go through a little bit. And you'll look. Little, little, little. Okay, I can pause it. I guess I can reset it and I can come out of it. Wow, I don't believe I just did that. I hyperventilated. That's the stopwatch. Agenda. Uh, get you into your calendar agenda items. It's tied to your Google Calendar if you set it up for that. And this is the agenda aspect of today in the Google Calendars. And it shows up nicely. Your alarm is where you basically set different. I'm not going to go through all of it, but uh, this is the lookout for it. It's a round thing where you can set the date and time and a.m. or p.m. and check it. And now you've got an alarm set. Creative way of doing that. Now, this is a custom one I've installed called Audio Visualizer Free. These are from the Google Play Store. And this is just a fun, playful thing that, you know, it's going to bounce around with different symbols based on the audio it is hearing. And you can change it to look at different patterns or whatever. Here's a different thing here. And it's switching over to it now and so forth. Just colorful play if you want to show off bubble level for where this comes in and yeah it's just what you expect you can find out if your surface is level or not this is not stock with it but this shows you that you can put android wear watch apps on this android wear tick watch pro 
calculator uh, is, oh, oh, did you see that? I triple tapped and I, I, I zoomed in. That's something you can set up in here in the settings. Okay, it's just a basic calculator. And, but I wanted to show you that after you get your computation and divide it by something so we get some more digits, that when you're done with this and you leave, you get the listing of all of the computations that you've already done. Kind of a nice little feature that you may not, maybe didn't know was there. That I downloaded. Compass is also something I downloaded. This has the compass capability built into it, and it's really accurate. I'm sitting in the north, and it's keeping up with me, and it's giving us all of those readings. Now, again, for all these Android Wear type things, the way a Wear watch works is you download it to your phone. You download it into your phone, and from your phone, it's going to link back to your watch. You can download it through the Play Store in your uh, watch, uh, but it's got a link into your phone. Oh, I'm so used to straight Android where you swipe over to get to your apps. In uh, Wear Android, you have to go like this. So we have been playing with this and that and the compass. And contacts is going to be your contacts for your Google account. Uh, tied to your phone for making your phone call. Easy Voice Recorder is my preference if you're going to do recording from your, uh, your watch because this thing is really sweet. First of all, you can set the gain level. So if you're in a, an area where it's really soft but you want to be able to hear what you're recording, you can do that by increasing the gain and then you don't have to turn the volume up. That works. It'll, when you hit this, it's going to record everything that uh, that session to the watch. When you're done and you're tethered to your phone and you've got it all set with the same thing on your phone, it'll transfer that whole audio file over to your phone so it lives and breathes there and then you can work with it from there. That is easy voice recorder. Okay, this is the essentials mode and this is the one just like you saw getting into it the other way. It's uh, saying I got 78% battery. When you go into essential mode, you're really shutting it down to just like hibernation, where it's only going to be this screen, but not like this screen that we saw when we did the, the, the swipe down and went into there. That's kind of a light sleep, a nap, that you could get easily out of simply by touching it or however. If I switch to this mode, it's going to tell me that it's going to greatly expend the battery life, but I have to press and hold the power key and reboot it to come back up. Only use this if you're almost out of power or you want it to last all night and still have the time, that kind of stuff. But it's available for you. And that was essentials, right? Essential mode. You got to find your phone, which is just going to cause your phone to ring. Now, you get into all this stuff. You've got Google Fit, Fit Workout, and Fitness. We've got Google Fit right here which is your standard Google Fit application. It shows you what you've done today, and you have the opportunity to go into walking, running, strength training, check your challenges, or a whole bunch of other workouts. So you have a variety of different things, uh, different apps that you can use for your fitness um, goals. And the Google Fit is this one. And look at all of the different types of fitness um, things, even golf and gymnastics. I mean, it goes on and on. Check Google Fit on your phone if you want to look at all of them, even an other there. When you get into one of them, you set it all up. You can go into your settings. You can have spoken announcements. You can have number display, large or small. And you can start your walk with GPS activated. All that is in the Google Fit. Now, Fit Workout is a specialty area where you go right into these uh, workouts again, right directly there. And see how fast it locked in on GPS? Okay, Google Fit, Google Fit Workout. This is more of a synopsis of all of your data in one place including the workouts you've done in the past. And that's just the, the, the workout area itself. Now, fitness, which is the one that's programmed into your button here, when you get your watch, 
is the implementation that the tick watch is set up for and it's got this stock appearance that we've seen on many watches including the earlier tick watches ah i gotta stop talking <laughs> yes please stop you can have an outdoor run that's the first one an outdoor walk those are both gps uh induced indoor run which doesn't use gps and cycling um and then freestyle. So those are the different categories. And when you pick one, like cycling, and you go into it, you're going to get... Wow, I went too fast. I accidentally hit it. Okay, let's get out of here. Cycling. There. Now, it's going to look for GPS. It's going to lock on GPS. Once that's done, then you're really ready to go. And you can select your goals by going in here. Now, before you hit go, if you want to... You can set a duration, how long you want it to go, uh, your, your cycling to happen before you stop, or a distance. And because it's working with GPS, it's going to calculate the distance you've been cycling no matter what route you take, right? Target distance in miles or calories burned. So you've got those, in this case, three different categories. You see the dots on the side. That'll tell you how many you've got. When you hit go, it's going to give you your countdown with loud audio beeps and you're on it's giving you your time your miles and your heart rate it's flashing and trying to catch your heart rate right now and if i bring it back i can switch it so i see my calories burned and my miles per hour there's three dots down at the bottom tap it again and i've got my pace and tap it again and I'm back here to total miles, and there's my heart rate. So all of this stuff is happening in the uh, main screen, which you can bring back like you would when you're bringing back the time. And if it is back at the regular time, you can just tap it once and come back over here. There's three dots here, which means I can go over, and you can see the path I've traversed. And this scales, I mean, obviously I haven't moved, so this is just GPS accuracy. Maybe that's five feet or something or it could be five miles, but it'll show you your, uh, your track while it's happening with the time up here. That's that screen. And this screen is where you can pause your activity if you want to take a water break and start it back up again right from there. Look how bright that is. This is very viewable out in bright sunlight. They've done a great job of white against black, big digits, really, really nice long press to end. You don't just press it. You don't slide it. You long press it. There's a circle going around it. And that ended the cycling session. And it gives you basic information right here, which you can share, save, or if it's meaningless, just discard it. But it doesn't do it right away. It gives you an option to, to make sure you want to do that. So there's the flashlight. We saw that already. I've got that set up for double tap. And here's Google Pay. I have not set this up yet, but when you get your account all set up and you tie a credit card to it, you'll be able to uh, pay from your watch using all of that process. It has NFC built into it for doing Google Pay. Get started and go through it. Like I said, I haven't done that yet. I eventually plan to. Health it's sort of like a snapshot of the fitness that we saw back up above. This is a review, and I've, I've done a few things. I did a walk and a run and a cycling, which was really riding in a car. But I, you know, eh. <laughs> my form of cycling. This is your step count. You slide over and you've got that. Here's uh, my goal was 30 minutes, and I achieved that for, for this time period. And... Uh, it also wants to see you do something every hour for your nine-hour period that I have set up, and I've only I've been sedentary a while. And then here you get into all of the things where you can set these different um, these different goals and goal reminders, and your privacy settings for the use of their data and all of that stuff. And that is in this section here called health, heart rate. That gets you into a heart rate. Now, let me show you how fun this is. There it is flashing. The best place to get a heart rate is on a non-hairy part, you know, of your body that doesn't have fingerprints. So like the fleshy part near your thumb, if you really want to get a good, accurate reading. Um, and this gives you a really big digits. This is one of the things I really like about this tick watch. It's bright. 
You can see that out in the bright direct sun. It's bright white against black. It's big digits. If you're working out and you want to have uh, your heart rate to really monitor it, this is the watch for it. You can program for double tap to come in right here to the heart rate if that's something you want to do instead of flashlight or health or whatever. But it's giving you a really good, solid, accurate, and changing, as your heart rate does, reading for you. Same heart rate that you're going to get if you're doing it in a fitness app or something like that. But uh, it's giving it to you really nice, really big. And it's on there for quite a long time before it automatically falls out and takes you back. Okay? That is the heart rate. Ah, come on. <laughs> Got to go like that to get into it. Now, notice they've all been moved up to the top. All the most recent things I've been doing, the last three are there. And then it starts with stopwatch and goes alphabetical all the way down. So you have an easy way to get to the most recently used app. Google Keep is great. It's a little note thing that you can, you know, jot notes or speak them into this or whatever you want. And it, it permeates across all of your stuff, your computer, your tablet, everything is, uh, is there when you use Google Keep. I got a lot of my own stuff in there, so I won't go into it. Maps is your basic Google Maps, and it's going to hone in on your current location. Here's the uh, privacy statement and section. Uh, really take this stuff seriously. And here's where you can set up all sorts of restrictions on use of your data. So for once, you've got a watch now that's going to give you all sorts of access so you can fully understand and limit uh, the use of your data, your privacy. Pandora is one of my favorite streaming music things. It's free service is great. And it's available, again, you, uh, you put Pandora on your uh, phone and you get all logged in there and it's going to push it here when you synchronize uh, and you'll have it right here on your watch. You don't need to have your phone with you. You know, you just need this to be connected to the internet through uh, Wi-Fi or whatever to stream. Phone is your basic phone app. Brings you into uh, call history. If you have some, you can get your dial pad. You can go into contacts. Uh, typical stuff. And again, this tethers to your phone. So your phone calling will be to and from the watch as long as you're close enough to the phone for it to work. It does not have its own SIM card. So you're not going to be um, doing your own separate phone calling from a separate phone number. It's a fully tethering watch for that capability. Google Play Store directly here. When you get into this now, it's going to only be able to show you apps that are related to Google uh, Wear OS. And this is how I, you know, checked out a whole bunch of different ones. You can get the Washington Post. You can download healthy recipes. There's the Google Keep. See, it says installed. Google Fits installed and on and on and on and on. A whole bunch of goodies that get you going with the, uh, the Wear OS through the Play Store. But again, you can download them by searching on Wear OS or Google Wear or whatever on the Play Store in your phone download them there and then have it push to your watch later. Your reminders is a simple section where you can go in and if you've got any uh, reminders you want to put out there, you can do them. Let's take a look at the uh, settings now. Settings have lots of capabilities to them. We'll run through them in the display itself. You can change the watch faces directly from here or as you saw, simply by sliding left and right. We can adjust the brightness. It's on automatic right now, but I can pump that puppy up to five if I want it really bright. If I know I'm going to be in a bright area or, or if you're going to the movie theaters, you can set it way down to one or anything in between. Looks like for the video, maybe a four is a good level. There we go. I'm just going to lock it in on that. You have your font size, normal, small or large, which increased and we lost. There we go. We lost the small print underneath, but now the fonts are much larger. And you can go all the way down to a tiny little font like this. Whoops. Okay. Come on back to me. And there's the small font. So it's running on normal, which is a good size because it's putting everything that you can see on the screen. You have always on screen. Let's talk about that in just a second. And then touch lock. If I go in here, Notice this, the screen is now off, 
turn it on with the power button, say OK, and it's locked, and I can't do anything with it. This is the same thing as if you swipe down and hit that button uh, to go into this mode. It's going to stay like this. It's not going to switch back. Oh, wait a minute. It did. It did when I twisted it. Oh, interesting. It just locked the screen. Oh, I did not know that. So this is an option where you can still see it if you have to twist your arm, but you can't do anything with the screen. It's locked the screen. Great if you're doing your sports and stuff. You have to press the power button to get it to unlock, he says. Okay. There, we're back again. <laughs> All that's in display, and I wanted to mention this now, the always on screen. I'm going to turn that on, and you're going to see something really different. Now it operates like a regular old tick watch. Not that any of them are old, but that technology was such that if you had a specialty wear watch face on here, and you let it time out, if you have the always on screen option, it stays on. Now see how that's different? That's not the reflective screen. That's not the one that's going to be bright in the sunlight. That's not the secondary uh, screen. This is your regular screen. It's using battery power to do that. And all the different watch faces have different ways of doing that. So when you have the always on screen, it really means you're always on this screen. You're never going to switch to that new special screen. See that? It's kind of a subdued version of the lit up color screen with soft lighting behind it, but you're not going to see this outdoors. So this is something you might want to think about whether you want to go into that mode or not. Because if you get in here and turn that off, display. Now I don't know a lot of people realize this, but this is uh, kind of an important point because for the, the, the TicWatch Pro, that is what uh, this whole new screen is about. Now it's switched off and now it's back to that. See, that's reflective. And if you're in bright sunlight, it's going to be lit up really, really good. Okay, so you want to go back to the default way that the Android Wear watch faces work. You have that option when you are in your display area and turn the always on screen feature on. As far as I can tell, that's the only place you can get to that here as well. Sound is basic. You can adjust your media volume, your alarm volume, and your ring volume. Uh, you can have it uh, vibrate for calls, and you can change the watch ringtone so that you'll hear a different ringtone. Then you get into your apps and notifications, and this is more of a whole Android management kind of thing. The app info is where you can actually see all of the apps that are loaded in here. You can choose one and you can uninstall it or force it to stop. You can check the permissions, all the standard type of stuff that you do with Android. That's what you get in there. You can modify the notifications for the apps and the permissions. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. You can turn it so it won't disturb you when your watch is not on your wrist, which is kind of cool. And you can override that do not disturb setting for specific things like maybe phone calls. And you can even change vibration patterns on this watch, all in the apps and notifications. Gestures, here's the tilt to wake and the touch to wake. Now, that's what I had set up. If I take both of those off, then it's not going to turn it on no matter what I do except pressing the button. And that's a pretty cool way to operate if you really want it to always be in just that little digital low power display and not accidentally constantly be turning on. Wrist gestures you can turn on. Don't totally understand that. Something we need to explore together what some of the wrist gestures are. There's different ones, I guess. That feature turns it on and off. And you can probably learn about it in the tutorial. And then there's even more tips that you can get into. I know, i got to leave you something to explore on your own, right? Connectivity gives you your Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, NFC. You can go into airplane mode there, and you can turn on or off location mode. All of these features you've seen in different ways as we've gone through this uh, to get them started. Accessibility, and here's where I did that magnification gestures. When you have that on and you tap three times, it magnifies the screen, so it makes it easy to read. Okay, and now I'm back out of here, and I'm into 
system battery saver essential mode whoa how did i get into here <laughs> okay i was in after connectivity to accessibility so that's the magnification gestures you have your text to speech output which is basically uh, where you can listen to the speech that's being read this is a talk back thing which uh the Android operating system has been using where you can use this if you um, are, are visually impaired or if you're outdoors and you can't see the screen because of the way you're, you're trying to navigate through here. So that's kind of a neat feature to play with if you're going to be outdoors and you're having a challenging time how you you know got your, 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 your stuff showing up. You might be able to listen to it instead. And you can set up for the power button to end your phone calls uh, if you want to. That's all in accessibility. Personalization, where you drop in here and um, you can do a screen lock thing we saw. You have different input methods for putting in data, including Google handwriting, right? The Google keyboard. And you can add different keyboards if you want to. And there's some fun Android Wear keyboards that you could put on this watch. All available there your accounts this is where you put in your google account information and tie it all together and add uh, personal accounts if you want to here's the customization for this button like i said a double tap is going to bring up the flashlight but i can tap on it and pick any of the apps that i've got in here show the weather do a timer do the fancy audio uh, display visual thing uh, voice recording whatever you want Smart reply, haven't played with that, but I believe that's with messaging. You can do the okay with the keyword detection. If you turn that on and you say that to your watch, you'll be able to activate uh, your assistant. And of course, it's going to eat more battery. And then device administration is an Android thing where you can control the uh, device administrators that allow things to happen on your watch. And you may need to do that as you add different kind of wear uh, apps as well. Okay, and that was on personalization. Two more. Stick with me. We've got storage, which is showing you um, data size for all of your different apps that are running and so forth. I'm not seeing a total in here of... Uh, your storage but definitely every little thing that's running is giving you storage information and then system now here's where you can turn on battery saver again that's another thing here's that essential mode showing up one more time there's where you can set date and time if you don't pull it from your phone restart and power off how do we get to all of those remember press and held here or was it press and held here ha <laughs> ha there's the test Okay, uh, you can disconnect and reset the whole thing, and you can get about, which it tells you about this model, its device name, its versions, its serial number, everything that you want to know about your tick watch, and then regulatory information, which a lot of this is uh, what we saw, I think, in uh, the manual as well. Wow, and there's all of the stuff that they've gone through for certification in China, Europe, Canada and the US. Interesting. All right, that's settings. Shazam, y'all use Shazam, right? When you want to know what song is playing, it works here. See, it's bouncing to my voice. And if I were singing something, hmm, I don't know. I don't I don't think it does. Well, I don't know. You know, it'll definitely nail any song playing on the radio and it'll link right here to your watch, which is awesome. This is a that's a specialty one I installed. This is another uh, special custom one. That's a speedometer in kilometers per hour, but I believe you can change it to miles per hour if you want to, and uh, it's going to give you your speed. So if you're driving uh, or a passenger in a car with your teenage son, you can keep track of how fast that car is going. Step ranking is something related to your fitness, but you have to turn it on and authorize your information to be out there. And if you do that in the data settings, you can see how good you are against others. Here's a basic timer that you can start, which is different than the stopwatch. This is countdown timing. Okay. And then there's the Google Translate. 
and you can uh, on the where watch right you can translate from one thing to another ah, allow translate to record now I've all I've already gone through some of these permissions on a lot of these apps this one I hadn't tried yet you get this every single time grant the permission then you're able to go hello how are you Hola, como estas? Okay, so it translated it. I'm not sure if it can speak it as well. Sometimes you can set that up, but hey, at least we got that working. And then finally, weather. And weather will show you in your area, which is right at the very top, which is scrolled off the screen, shows you in Fahrenheit, because it's set up for that, with wind speed and precipitation and forecast coming from weather.com. And those basically are the apps that I've got installed and the custom ones that come with this TickWatch Pro. Wow, we've covered a lot, but there's more. Remember, I told you that the bands are removable. So if you wanted to, since there's no antennas in here, like there are in some of the Android watches, you could carry this along as a pocket watch. That's right, you don't necessarily have to have this on your arm. But if you do, well, I'm gonna be doing a review of, of these guys. They've got all sorts of different fun things and one of which is uh, different bands and you can customize your watch to look like anything. Here's what it looks like with the brown one on. But let's get a brown screen, why don't we? Let's switch into Okay, that matches pretty well. There's our watch. There's our nice band. Yeah, you want to see the red one? All right, there we are, red. Of course, we need to have the red face on it, right? Okay, red face, red band. Yeah, any color combination you like. Blue, sure. Blue, blue, blue it is. And with red, it's a nice color contrast. Of course, you could change it to blue or purple or whatever you like. One thing to point out, in addition to it being 22 millimeters diameter for here, when you get bands, make sure you get them, depending on your wrist size, with holes that go close to the edge and with an arm that goes really a long way around with holes that go all the way to the very end there. That gives you the most possible settings for all different kind of wrists. So, hey, it's your watch, it's your look, change the bands. I have a summary for you. And once again, all of the, the what you've just seen in the last half hour is the type of stuff I'm gonna start shifting over and just providing for subscribers so they don't wear down everybody that comes in just for a, what the heck is he getting an hour and a half to talk about a watch, right? Um, yeah, so subscribe if you're interested. Uh, it really helps us out here as well, and I think it's going to help you out if you're you're wanting to go deeper with these different watches as we explore. The TickWatch Pro, about this fancy screen technology stuff that we've got going here. Once again, you've got different modes to go into. Its natural mode is to go into this digital display unless and until you twist your arm or you touch it or you do some other shenanigans again you can turn those off so you have to touch the buttons uh, if you want or you can go into um how did we do that from here we go into here and we go into there and it turns on that mode where it's going to lock it into uh, this mode and these are all talked about here so i'm going to have this on the screen for you for a minute because it's information that the the tick watch folks have provided that's different ways you can use it and how much battery life you probably would get if you charge it once a week, okay? This is for like young professionals and working parents, they say. And here's how you would set it up in the different modes you would be in. But if you're a go-getter and you're gonna use it a little bit more, uh, you charge it every two to five days instead of once a week. And if you're one of these health fitness focus nuts, <laughs> uh, you can uh, charge it every seven to 30 days. Is that what we're seeing here? Mm-hmm. And these are the different uh, configurations. And again, and I haven't showed you this one, so let's go into the last one. I have to press it to come back on. Press it to get in here. And 
come back here to the essentials mode and see I'm at 74% did I activate it switch to essentials mode and this time I'm gonna say yes and now it switched over and it's in this essentials mode and it's not coming out of it that's the digital watch mode and it's locked in that thing to give you that 30 days kind of uh, it's going to still track your step count, which is cool, and it's, it's still got the date. Gosh, getting this lighting just right. Okay, but nothing comes out of it. The only way to get out of it is to press and hold on the power button, and that reboots the watch, which you haven't seen it boot up, right? Okay, let's watch it as it goes to remind you now that you're watching Smartwatch Ticks. We're available at smartwatchticks.com. And we're looking for good subscribers and thumbs ups and uh, all sorts of support um, to help us bring in more fun watches. If you haven't seen some of the other watches we uh, review here, we cover the whole gamut from fitness, sports, watches and bands to these uh, full blown Android smart watches, which are similar to a regular phone, but miniaturized. And instead of using Android Wear apps, you actually can install your stock Android apps that you normally have on an Android phone. So you can get your Facebook and your Spotify's and your um, oh, whatever or WhatsApp or all of those things, as well as specialty uh, apps if you use some of those as well. Those can all work on Android watches. Android Wear, Google's um, special adaptation of Android for smartwatches, which is on here right now, is uh, specialized, you know, for smartwatches and limited in all of the things that you can do. So a blend is to have a good tick watch for all of the things you can do here. And then an Android watch that can give you complimentary stuff that you can't install on the, uh, the Wear watch. All righty, you've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. Look at that. It's solid metal on the back. We uh, appreciate you being here and check back because I've got more to tell you, a lot more to tell you about the Tick Watch Pro. Now, the thing about this video and YouTube is it's going to be around for a long, long time. Uh, but yeah, the watch is just now coming out. So to satisfy both those of you who are watching this way into the future, and those of you who are watching it right now in July or August of 2018, I got to tell you, this watch, the Tick Watch Pro, is going to only be available through Amazon uh huh. All the way through September. So from now until the end of September 2018, that's where you're going to get it. Check down below for the buying links. There's more. Between now and August the 15th, you got to be a Prime member. If you're not Amazon Prime, you won't be buying it either. How's that for a bounce, huh? If you're an Amazon Prime member, you got it up until August 15th. If you're just an Amazon user, you can pick it up sometime between now and the end of September. And after that, after that, it should be available from a lot of sources. And again, check the buying links down below. No matter when you're watching it, we will have uh, where you can click to go. Yeah, you can get this watch face from Watchmaker. It's one of the ones that's free through Watchmaker. I'm done. We've been here way too long. <laughs> we'll see you on the other side of the Tick Watch Pro. Thanks for watching.